Whoa, that made smoke. I'm beginning to wonder if this is John's area or my area. John Project, John Project, John Project. Apparently making boats in my rain runoff, John Project. Wants to do blacksmithing, starting to set things up, John Project. John Machine. Yeah, I think it's gone to the John. Anyways, we're working on this today because I need my bench back in order to get the Sears Dragster up here. We've got like thousands of dollars worth of parts showing up and we need to get brand new tires on that and stuff so we got the transmission out of this which is this really early edition 633a we've got the transmission out of this which is this peerless 2300 here and a lot of you have asked for a comparison so Right here, you can easily see that the 633A is way longer than the Peerless. The other thing is, is this is four gears. This is a high-low split six gear. They do seem to have the same size band brake assembly. As much as I hate to say it, the John Deere Peerless 2300 setup is actually a stronger brake setup. Now, they both use the same exact bolt pattern on the hubs, but a Peerless 2300 hub is a fine thread going into it. The aluminum hub setup and the metal 5000 series setup are coarse thread going into them. So the hubs definitely are different in them. Now, whether you can swap the one inch axle hub from one to the other that would be interesting this one is a splined axle setup but there are one inch axle versions so just a little bit of info because a lot of people have asked whether we could just grab a modern day 633 and stuff it in in replacement the answer is not without a ton of modification the other thing is, is on a Peerless 2300, you've got one, two, three, four going through the top of the axle. On a 633A Roper style, you've got two here, you've got two here, and you've got two up front in the cross member. Also, the distance from center to the pulley on these is about four and a half inches and the distance from center of machine to the pulley on these is about five inches so you'd also have to figure out some way to make up the half inch anyways what do you say we put it back in okay all right pick it up no no i'm joking you're gonna throw your back out don't do that here's where we're at right now what what the chickens behind you were in a Congo line. The chickens are in a Congo line? Well, they were in a chicken in a Congo line. You! Get the hell out of there! That is my off-ramp. I hate you. Go away. You're nuggets. You're not too bad. You lay consistent eggs. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to try and film it while we're doing this because it gets pretty sketchy and dangerous. But basically, we've got a car jack there. He's got an impact, the lightweight, easy-to-control impact. And we have already taken and greased up some self-tappers out of an LT-1000 Craftsman frame. And we pre-ran them through the holes to make sure everything would work. So he's going to drop it down. I'm going to make sure that I get my ball through the hole and stick it up through where it's supposed to be. And we'll go from there. It is beyond stupid, the idea that I have to like unbolt the transmission and then drop or do whatever to change a belt. I'm sorry, not playing that game. I 
I do want to give a shout out to a bunch of old timers that got a hold of me and told me to actually watch out for this. This hub is bad. And I'm going to see if I can catch it on film. Can you see how the axle is staying put but the hub is actually moving back and forth? So, I appreciate everybody that got a hold of me in order to watch for this. There's a couple of workarounds, we'll word them, for this idea, but the real reality is it's a sign that the axle shaft is probably bad and the hub is definitely bad. But, we're just trying to putter around the yard. John's been getting into doing knife blades. He likes the idea of sharpening and polishing and stuff like that, so... We've got a new hem size. What do you got? This is my old blade from back when I was John's age. I hunted deer and everything else with this poor thing. It, I think it even says it was made in Pakistan. But this is a new little micro grinder. It's got a polisher on one side. It's got a really finite wheel on the other side. And John's going to see if he can read Chinesium directions in order to put the Dremel tool assembly together and all the cutoff stuff. And then you can polish to your heart's content, right? Oh. All right. You like the grinder? I haven't even tested it. Oh, oh. So, so You're not going to be like all those big YouTubers that, that just say happy things about everything? Yeah. Or are you going to test it first and then say what you really think? Yeah? Okay. That's my boy. Looks like the plasma cutter and I are going to have to cut out for the centrifugal clutch to be able to slide it on and off when we need to. And we've got our 3D printed template that I designed, which is over on Cults 3D. I'll post a link down below. I charge a buck to download the STL file for these. It's got the oil drain ports marked. It's got where to drill marked. And it's also got the shaft marked exactly where it should be. And it's the standard length for a Predator or a GX200. So if you're trying to figure out where the shaft goes, you just flip it over in order to see how the shaft lines up with things. So we're going to drill those out and go from there. Engine with some rust in the cylinders, random spark plug, random carburetor that I don't know where it even came from, gas that we really honestly don't know if it's any good, sounds about par for the course. I'm going to punch it with some starter fluid just to see first and go from there. Whoa. That made smoke. Oh, well, it's thinking about it. Let's open the choke. Alright, let's hold that at half throttle and choke and see if it'll pull over. See if in this next video clip that I slowed down, you can catch how I know from the smoke that both of the valves are stuck partially open. Oh yeah, that's adorable. That's covered in something that looks the consistency of mud water. Alright, we've literally had rust <laughs> coming out the more we oil down through the spark plug cylinder. So I think we got the valves to reseat, which is what I think was our previous issue. So we'll choke it a little bit. Actually, let's leave it unchoked and let's crank the idle way high. We know we're in neutral right now on the machine, so I'm not worried about if the engine flares up. Okay, give it some throttle, try it again. 
It's thinking about it. Okay, choke, throttle. actually still works okay we're gonna hook up a really really temporary connection to the throttle we're gonna hook up the brakes and the next video you guys see will be this thing puttering around the yard hopefully have a good day